Ronald Nelson with honors. With honors? What exactly does that mean? And what does it mean at Montgomery College? We're about to find out on this episode of Campus Conversations. Hi, I'm Jason Rivera and this is Campus Conversations. As you might imagine, college honors courses offer great opportunities for motivated students, and honors at Montgomery College is no different. With me to talk about those opportunities is Dean of College-Wide Honors, Carolyn Terry. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Carolyn. Jason. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Good. Um, tell me, what are the honors programs here at the college? Well, at Montgomery College, there are several options for students who want to engage in an honors program. We have special honors scholarship programs, but in addition to those programs, we have a general honors program that's spread throughout the curriculum. Um, students who come to Montgomery College who are qualified from their high school transcripts mm -hmm. with a GPA of a 3.5 or higher, and students who are already at Montgomery College but who have taken English 101 with a B or higher, and have a GPA of 3.2, are qualified to enroll in special honors modules that are spread throughout various courses in the mm. curriculum. And in these classes, the students have separate seats that are assigned and reserved for them where they can work individually with their faculty member on research projects that are associated to the course. So we have these honors modules in sciences, in humanities, in uh, social sciences, in the math courses, and these are typically classes that are at the 200 level or higher, okay. where students who are interested in some of the subject matter can do individual research hmm. on their papers. So how does, how does the honors modules differ from an honors program? Well, the honors modules are loosely associated with uh, the honors program because they exist as separate entities rather than all students taking them at the same time. So the honors modules are faculty-based rather than program-based. Okay. And students have many more options to take honors modules. These are the courses that students should look for that have the HM suffix on the course title. Okay. And that says to the student that if you take this class, you will be doing honors level work. And it will re be reflected on your transcript so that students have the credit on the transcript for taking honors courses. So what's the benefit to students when they take honors courses or right. are enrolled in an honors program? Right. Well, there are several benefits. The main benefit is that students who take these honors course courses are often looking for transfer opportunities. Okay. And when a student can present to a transfer institution that he or she has taken a number of honors level courses, they not only are more attractive to the transfer institution, but they also then qualify many times for the kinds of scholarships that transfer institutions will offer incoming students. Mm -hmm. So for instance, students uh, who are looking for the Maryland Transfer Scholarship, or students who are looking for the uh, Jack Kent Cook Scholarship, mm -hmm. which is an excellent make your life a dream kind of, of scholarship, takes care of all of your higher education costs. Or students who want to qualify for some of the um, institutional-based scholarships from Dickinson College or from Georgetown are often competing with a lot of other students mm -hmm. and if they have the GPA and if they have the honors credits on their transcript they're more competitive and more likely to get those transfer dollars. The other advantage is that students who take the honors courses have opportunities to present their original research mm -hmm. in various venues which many undergraduate students particularly at community colleges don't usually have that opportunity to do. So for instance, we have the Beacon Conference, which we participate in every year, which is a mid-Atlantic regional kind of conference mm -hmm. where students uh, can compete with other community college honors students. And I will say that Montgomery College usually does really well in that okay. competition. <laughs> um, and we also, we pay for the students to go and travel overnight and stay in a hotel and uh, get a little bit of that experience of what it's like to present at a conference. You said we pay for them, right? We do. Sure we pay we for them. <laughs> we pay for them to do that. We pay their room and board and we pay their travel costs. And then the other nice thing is that the students can, if they can't travel overnight, we have a Maryland Collegiate Honors Conference. Mm -hmm. And our honors director, Dr. Lucy Lauf, is the president of that organization this year. And she will be um, organizing a student group to go to that conference that's more regional. I think this year's is, is somewhere close by so that mm -hmm. students may not have to go overnight, 
but they are able to participate and they get a credit on their transcript where they can say I presented at a professional conference. Oh, very nice. Yes. So we've got a couple of minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, if I were a student who qualified for this program but had some fears about whether or not it was the right fit for me, what would you tell me? How would you encourage me to? Yeah, the first thing I would do is I would encourage that student to come in and talk to one of the honors coordinators on the campuses. Okay. Go to the Montgomery College website, check for, search for honors and go to the honors program site and look at all the various opportunities and go in and talk to one of the faculty who's listed on that site to ask if it's appropriate to them. The other thing I would say is that if you were a student who excelled in high school or even if high school was not the best experience but you feel like you can do this and particularly if you've done well in your first 12 credits at Montgomery College, stretch yourself to take the honors programs because you will be a more attractive candidate upon transfer. It sounds like it's um, a great opportunity to hone research skills yes. while really engaging in intellectual discussion. Yes, absolutely. And then we also have some honors opportunities for honors students. We do trips to museums and we do some cultural events and we have speakers who come in and they're open to all students but we try to create some special opportunities for the honors students as well. Okay, well great. Mm -hmm. Well I want to take this opportunity to thank you for sharing this information. Mm -hmm. I think it's really helpful for the college community to really understand what types of programs are out there that can help make students a more attractive candidates for institutions when they're looking to transfer and I'm sure it even benefits them when they are looking to move into the uh, world of work. Absolutely. Yes. We're going to take a closer look now at Montgomery College's Special Honors Programs. First up is the Macklin Business Institute. Meryl Gavernsky has the story. Hi Jason, I'm here on the Rockville campus where the Macklin Business Institute students just met for their weekly seminar. It is a small group, but all of the students have big plans for their future. We're going to like update our PARs too because some of them are just not. I'm the operations manager at the NBI Cafe. Also on campus, I'm the Student Senate Chief, Chief of Staff and Vice President of Phi Theta Kappa. My name is Brian Bake. I'm the Interim Director for the Macklin Business Institute. Macklin Business Institute is a honors program for business students. Um, we operate the student-run cafe on campus and also we have great opportunities. We have seminars every week where people, speakers come in and talk to us about real business skills, um, resume building, um, and then we also get to go on field trips to different businesses locally and we get to see exactly what it takes to run a business. The last part of the seminar, um, Mason, you want to talk about Macklin Business Institute. It was founded with a donation from Gordon Macklin, so we have a lot of resources that we can offer the students. We have relationships with the community and we try to have professors come in as well as community leaders come in and advise and speak with the students. Disadvantages of this type of resume? Very widely used. The most important skills that MBI students get is the ability to have experiential learning experiences. So they actually go out and learn by doing. So we have different field trips and students can actually see how businesses are run um, on a practical level. In the year that I've been in the Macklin Business Institute, I've learned so much that are just invaluable skills. I've learned um, how to be responsible, time management, um, running a business. Um, because I'm operations manager of the NBI Cafe, I've learned things like inventory and um, like working with different people, team management, um, just all these different things that I never would have gotten otherwise. And they all go to uh, a four-year school, so we have a 100% transfer um, acceptance rate. And we have a very good track record with the different schools and within the community. So when schools like Georgetown see that somebody graduated from the MBI program, they know that they're getting a student that has a certain degree of knowledge and breadth of uh, experiences, and they've been very successful. I would like to continue on to a four-year school. Um, probably majoring in business management and then I'd like to get my master's in public policy um, more focusing in nonprofit uh, management and then go on to law school. One example of a very successful student that we had was Stephen Church. Stephen Church graduated high school with a 2.7 GPA and he was not going to be admitted into the program but he was very persistent, he came to all of the seminars and we did let him into the program and not only did he, did he graduate number one in his class at Montgomery College, he actually went on to transfer to Columbia where he graduated number one in his class and then he went on to Columbia Law School. And now he works on Wall Street as an attorney and I recently met him about a month ago with the former director, Mr. Lang, and he's doing really well 
and he credits the MBI program with giving him a second chance. And that's not, that's just one of the stories that we've heard. Um, there's been so many different people who are doing, going to great schools and doing great things with their lives and really making a difference. And that just gives me such hope and excitement for the future, knowing that that could be me in a couple of years. MBI really gave me that chance to shine as a student. With a 100% transfer rate, it's safe to say that Faith and her classmates have a good chance at success in the future. Thanks, Meryl. Next, we turn to the Montgomery Scholars Program. Also based on the Rockville campus, this program creates a learning community amongst its students. With me now is Dr. Mary Fergal, the Program Director, and Christian Barrera, a Montgomery Scholars alum. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Fergal, can you tell me more about the Montgomery Scholars Program? Yes, it's a program that's based on accepting students straight from high school. So you have to be currently a senior in high school to apply. And um, we aim to create a learning community of 25, 26 students who will take classes together. They'll take half their courses together in a two-year degree. We expect them to finish in two years their two-year associate's degree and then transfer to a four-year school to finish there. How do they learn about the program? Well, we have recruiters going out to high schools, we have brochures, um, we encourage um, students to come to, we have an information session. Our next one is on November 9th, which is a Saturday okay. at 11 o'clock in Theatre Arts here at Rockville Campus. And we invite students, if they're in the least bit interested in finding out about Montgomery Scholars and Montgomery College, to come to that information, information session where they can meet other students as okay. well. Okay. So what would be uh, the criteria that you would be looking for for a student who might be interested in the program? Yeah, I mean, my mantra always is to students, don't eliminate yourselves before you start. <laughs> okay. Sometimes people hear the word scholar and they get really up worried, you know, I don't think I'm a scholar per se. Um, we're looking for students who really are, have something in the program really touches them and attracts them okay. in relation to the ideal of small classrooms which of course are uniform at Montgomery College but here where you'll be taking courses with other students and being really challenged in a rigorous honours program that also supports you. Mm -hmm. So students who um, do mean to be competitive you should have a 3.0 GPA okay. um, and up. Um, then also, um, we, we, you have to take your SAT scores, but you can also take the AccuPlacer um, exam, which is a Montgomery College exam to place into college level English. And then you have essays and recommendation letters. And you can also, uh, if you are an artist or a musician, you can insert some of that work into your application. One of the really unusual things about our program is we actually want students from lots of different disciplines. Mm -hmm. Many scholars programs are based on a specific theme or a specific mm -hmm. um, area of the arts, humanities, sciences. But we actually want the engineering stu student sitting next to the art history major, sitting next to the architecture major mm -hmm. or the sociology or criminal justice major. Um, we find that very diverse and stimulating in the classroom. Sounds exciting and fortunately we have Christian with us who's gone through the program. Yes. So Christian tell me about your experience. You know it's it's funny to hear Dr. Fergal uh, talk about the admissions process because I think I was one of those students that was kind of insecure in terms of, you know, w would I even get into this program because mm -hmm. I did come to the information session and I thought, this is it. I think I found a program that speaks to me. So I encourage every single student out, out there who is a senior or maybe a junior to come out and learn about the Montgomery Scholars Program and learn, you know, to see whether you fit or fitting or not, but to give yourself a chance. Um, after I applying, I got accepted. I always say that I did my little dance, you know, <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't believe I got in. You know, it, it meant a lot for me because I, I knew that I had found something very special and going through the program, I just was reassured of that. Um, going through the Montgomery Scholars Program, I think that was perhaps one of the best experiences in my life. I mean, there's no day that I don't, you know, that I don't remember the friendships that I made there, um, the push that I got from the professors. I mean, it is a challenging experience. Mm -hmm. um, I will not, you know, sugarcoat that. Um, but it's one that you come out with stronger. Mm -hmm. um, I came in, you know, with doubt, self-doubt, uh, thinking, you know, I don't know if I have the language skills, for example, I had just got my, gotten here to this country four years ago then. Um, mm -hmm. And so it, it, it was one of those things that, to me, to be in a classroom with really you know, uh, driven individuals even pushed me further. Mm -hmm. uh, made me feel that I was in an environment where 
I could succeed academically, but at the same time, the support system that is about you know around each Montgomery scholar, I think is what truly makes this a scholar community. And I emphasize the word community because mm -hmm. I think that as a Montgomery scholar, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, even when I transferred to the George Washington University later on, the academic journey can be quite lonely, but it doesn't have to be. Um, I mean, we had events where we, we, we will go to uh, Professor White's house for Philo Cafe to engage in philosophical thought and discussions, um, from going to uh, conferences to you know present our papers that we had done mm -hmm. um, as a Montgomery scholar, or in, at that time I got to travel to the University of Cambridge, which was one of the, those experiences that you just don't forget when mm -hmm. you're studying in one of the oldest universities in the world and. I think it opened up my eyes to that I was not just a citizen, you know, of this country or back in my country, but a global citizen. And I think that's something that they also embed in you. Excellent. So it sounds like there's huge benefit yes. to students. Yes. Is there anything you want the community to know about the Montgomery Scholars before we close out our segment? I think what I would like them to know that there is this opportunity at Montgomery College. Um, that the program in many ways is a microcosm of the college itself, of the many opportunities that are here at MC. As you know, we have wonderful engineering programs, um, art programs, um, we have that brand new science building. There's so many, many things here. And Montgomery Scholars is, as I say, a microcosm of that. Well, I, I want to thank the both of you for sharing your experience and sharing more about the program. I think it's definitely something that the community is going to benefit from learning more about. So thank you both. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. When we return, our producer Marcus Rosanna will join me to talk about one more honors program. And this one is a perfect fit for many of our non-traditional students. Marcus, there's one more program we um, have to talk about, and that's the Renaissance Scholars, right? Yes, I recently went out to the Germantown campus to talk to the program director, Joan Nake. The interesting thing about the Renaissance program is that it offers scholarship money to the classes that are specific to the Renaissance program, yet it doesn't require the students to be full-time, and the classes are offered on evenings. Now that benefits, as you'll hear in the video, benefits a lot of the non-traditional students that are in the Renaissance program. Hmm. Professor Nake, today we're talking about the various honors programs uh, for students here at Montgomery College, and the Renaissance Scholars Program is a little bit different from your, um, I guess, traditional honors program where it serves non-traditional students quite often. Tell us a little bit about how the Renaissance Scholars is different from the other scholars programs that we have, honors programs we have at Montgomery College. Uh, first of all, it is for both part-time and full-time students. And our students receive or earn scholarships for taking courses within the program. Um, these courses all fulfill their graduation requirements and they all transfer to four-year universities. We've made sure about that. But I think one of the unique things about the Renaissance Scholars Honors Program is the interdisciplinary nature of the courses. Uh, for example, even in our, some of our one-credit fall courses, we're offering, offering a course in infinity and art, mathematics and art. We're also offering a course on history through Star Trek and another course on the history of religion. Now, is this the dyad format that uh, we're talking uh, about? No, actually, these are the HP one credit classes okay. in the fall. We have the dyads in the spring, which are even more exciting and really are the core of the program. Okay. Okay. Uh, the dyads that we're going to be offering this spring are uh, political science, uh, which is comparative governments combined with literature. 
and in that course we're going to be offering literature that reflects comparative governments. Okay, so we're going to be offering literature from India, from Iran, from Germany, wow. from South Africa, and all, for example, we're offering a piece of literature that is for uh, pre, uh, during apartheid and a piece of literature that's from post-apartheid in South Africa. So we're very excited about that. But we have another course, which is Introduction to Anthropology, combined with philosophy, which is the history of religion. And that discusses the five major religions in uh, the United States and basically in the world and combines it with anthropological introduction to cultural anthropology. Very exciting as well. And then we have a brand new dyad, which I'm very excited about, which is art, two-dimensional art, okay. combined with introduction to philosophy from Plato on to the modern philosophers. So that's going to be a very exciting course. And our professors are all handpicked, and it's, it's just very exciting. But perhaps the most unique aspect of our program is unlike other honors programs that take students directly from high school, Ours are taken from students who are already here at okay. Montgomery College. So the, it's truly focused on Montgomery College students. And sometimes, you know, students don't do as well in high school, but they flourish in college. Okay. And so when they flourish here, then we offer the opportunity to them to be accepted into the Renaissance Scholars Program. The requirements are pretty simple. Uh, it's a 3.2 GPA, uh, 12 credits or more, and an A or a B in English 101. So, and again, it gives it a unique flavor. We have students from age 16 to 64, wow. maybe even older. Um, we have classes that are offered in the evening uh, so that we can accommodate people who work during the day and cannot, in fact, all our classes presently are offered during the evening so that we can accommodate students who work during the day and can only come to class at night. That's incredibly important in today's economy. Yes. Um, so reaching that population of students is excellent for, like you say, the highly motivated students. So talk a little bit about the application process and what you're seeing. You said from 16 to 64. 64 so how, right. how are students that are already here going about applying to be a Renaissance scholar? Well, if they're already here, mm -hmm. uh, then I, in fact, right now I'm writing a letter, sending out a letter to all students who are here, who have 12 credits or more, uh, 3.2 GPA or okay. higher, and giving, uh, sending out the application to them, both by email and U.S. mail, and they are receiving this, and then that's one way. Okay. Another way is the professors tell the students, I ask the professors to, particularly in English 101, 102, but all the courses, um, tell the students about the Renaissance Scholars Program, and so that they, they know about it and they can apply if they meet the criteria. Another avenue is that I often meet with students through Student Senate, Okay. and meet with various clubs to let them know. Uh, I also meet with individual faculty to let them know about the Renaissance Scholars, and I meet with the counselors. So we publicize it in many, many different ways so that students are aware of the program and can apply. Okay, very good. Um, talk a little bit about the hands-on approach that they're afforded, the luxury of being a Renaissance Scholar. We have about a minute left, um, but I remember when I was in college, it was very important class size mm -hmm. and interaction with your instructors or your counselors. How does that benefit the Renaissance students? Well, I can't tell you enough. First of all, class size is 20. Mm -hmm. There are two instructors in the class all the time with the students, and we do a great deal of special advising during the course of the, of the program and also for transfer. Uh, this past May, I was very fortunate to be able to go up to Smith College and see five Renaissance scholars graduate from Smith, one with a Fulbright. That's fantastic. And, and just, so we, we open up the, their potential. We say to them things such as, you know, there is a world out there. You need to apply, you know, you're very talented, no matter what your field is. Maybe it's economics, maybe it's biology, maybe it's history. And, and let's see where the best place for you to transfer to is. That's, that's very exciting. That's fantastic. Professor Nake, it's, it's great to see that you're, you're giving the opportunity for these Montgomery College students that might not be the, you know, the standard population of, of, of college students, giving them the opportunity to really explore themselves academically at Montgomery College. Yes, uh, we, we are doing that and it's, I feel it's an honor and a privilege to serve as director of the Renaissance Scholars Program because it is so helpful to students. My name is Erica Watts. I'm a sophomore at Montgomery College and I'm part of the Renaissance Scholars Program.
When you go into a normal college classroom, you're being lectured. Whereas when you go into a Renaissance Scholars classroom, you're expected to have done the reading, you're expected to participate, and you can actually have a good conversation with the professor. So you're actually talking things through, you're understanding things a lot better. I know that I learn really well being able to talk about it and being able to um, get the professor's ideas and have them kind of align with your own. The Renaissance Scholars Program has definitely helped me with confidence because they do look to you for your opinion and for your participation in the classroom. So when you're speaking in front of other people that you don't know and giving your ideas and forming your own thoughts and opinions for a group to judge what you're saying, it's been able, it's helped me build confidence and self-assertiveness as well as giving me the opportunities and privileges that I wouldn't have as just being a general admissions student. It's something that I would recommend because of all the doors that are open to you after you become a scholar. I've been able to network and meet people and have opportunities for further education brought to me that I didn't even know was possible. So the director and the professors the letters of recommendation that they write for you for internships, for other scholarships. I mean, the opportunities are just endless. Joining the Renaissance Scholars Program has opened so many doors for me. You're meeting people who care about you, who see potential in you that you might not see in yourself. They see something in you that they know that needs to be pushed, and, and they push you, and they tell you exactly what needs to be done. It's on you to do the work and to follow through with it, but to meet the people and make those connections and see a face to an email really helps with, be, with being successful. Marcus, Erica is just one of many of the students who benefit from our special honors programs. You're right, Jason. The Montgomery College Honors Programs, they certainly provide excellent opportunities across the board for these students. However, of the 26,000 plus students, credit students that we have enrolled at Montgomery College, only a very, very small percentage are in the honors programs. And the data that we've learned shows that 25% or more of our current students actually are eligible to be in these honors programs. So there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect uh, between the students, maybe in high school, that don't think that they're uh, ready for these programs or don't think that they can qualify to the actual reality which is they can. Or may not be aware of the programs. True. For more information about any of today's stories or to see past episodes of Campus Conversations, visit our website at montgomerycollege.edu slash campusconversations. From all of us here at Campus Conversations, thanks for watching.